Hi, this is Jim Lyon. You're listening to Viewpoint with me today, Jennifer Wilson. Hello, Jim. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Here we are. The days are marching fast towards yes. the great holiday. It seems like everything in the world is beginning to accelerate. Right. Seeing lots of things happening as we head towards Christmas. And for today... You and I are at Bronner's Christmas Wonderland in Frankenmuth, Michigan. <laughs> it's amazing. Now, I know some of our listeners may not be familiar with Bronner's, but you can't many miss it. are. This is the world's largest Christmas store all the year through. Yes. It is jam-packed with all kinds of things that people can use to celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ. And let's just say, this is still a family-owned business, three yes, generations in line, and it was founded with the premise of putting Christ in Christmas, making mm-hmm. sure that Whatever the celebration, Jesus was in the middle, it was his birthday, and the family still honors that today, and that's very evident where we're standing, and as we unpack the Christmas story today, JJ, let's start right here in department number six, in the eight acres, yes, eight acres under (laughs) one roof of Bronner's Christmas Wonderland, right here, department six, it's the nativity section. Beautiful. Amazing collection of nativities in every shape, size, hue you could imagine. We'll be right back. JJ, yeah. we're here at Bronner's Christmas we Wonderland. Are. Nativity it's section. A big deal. It is a big deal because <laughs> Christmas is a really big yes, deal. That's our theme. And nothing says that more well dramatically than Bronner's Christmas Wonderland. Yes. You drive up to it and you know Christmas is the main event here. Yes. And the main event of Christmas is the story of the birth of Christ, yes. which brings us to nativity sets. Do you know anything about the oh. origins of what well, in some countries they call the crash or the manger scene I or know the that nativity it's set? Connected to Saint Francis. Francis of Assisi. The story goes, and he actually has some witnesses who later wrote this down, that he went to the Holy Land in the 13th century to visit for himself. And he went to Bethlehem and saw the traditional site of our Lord's birth in Bethlehem. And the church building there, the Church of the Holy Nativity, still stands. It's the oldest continuously operating church building in the world. Wow. Dates back at least to the 4th century. And so he was there in the 13th century. Yeah, and it's built right over the site. But it was already hundreds of years old when he went there. And it's built over a cave, which we think was the original site of Jesus' birth caves were the stables of that part of the world in those days. Anyway, he was so moved by the reality of the Christmas story as he went underneath the church into this cave where people think Jesus was actually born, that he went back to Italy to his home place, and he was disturbed that Christmas, much celebrated, guess what? 13th century, it was too much about materialism and gift giving. Wow, even then. That was his burden. And he had a pastor's heart. And he thought, there's something the matter with that. People are missing the heart of Christmas because they're not focusing on the story of Christmas. They're focusing on all the trappings of it. And so he decided to create the first of record living nativity. Wow. The year is 1223. And he got some animals and some people. These were real people and real animals. And he staged them in like set pieces, you know, put them on a, on a stage so people could in a glance, see the main characters, Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus, the angels, the shepherds, the wise men, all these characters that are in the history of the Lord's birth, he put them all up on the stage and people could see it. And it was hugely popular. I bet. Within a hundred years, all across Europe, churches were having these living nativities. Mm. But after a while, you know, he couldn't find the right sheep or whatever. (laughs) They started creating little statues or figurines. So you have what we now accept as just a central part of the Christmas celebration, nativities. Nativities. A nativity set. Now, where we are at Broaders, they have every imaginable configuration. It's just amazing. We're in one small section of the store and completely surrounded floor to ceiling with nativities, representations of, of the Christ child with Mary and Joseph, and then some expansion with the shepherds and the angels. I'm looking right now at one that is like a matryoshka doll. So each one of the characters can be taken apart and fit inside of each other. And, you These know, are like nesting, nesting dolls. Nesting yes. dolls. And it is amazing. All the characters, there's, I think this uh, shepherd and 
and one of the kings are, the are the largest, largest ones. So they'll hold everybody and else everybody together. else gets yes. to crowd inside. It's amazing. And there's a stained glass one, and there's well, there's some beautiful just crystal made out of crystal glass single pieces where all the figures. There's are one carved. I remember my grandmother having. It's wood. It's delicately carved and figures out of wood, but on top of it is a fan like propeller. Yes. And what happens is you light candles in the corners, and the heat rises and spins the fan. I just remember seeing that. That is a Scandinavian time. tradition, yes. or I grew up in a Scandinavian neighborhood. Everyone had those. We called them Swedish nativities because that was their origin. And of course, that just is a data point that nativities have become popular all around the world and all often reflect a culture or a community of its origin. I love this relief one, JJ, right here. It's, it's just really a base stunning. relief. It's a, it's a single stand-up piece, but it has all the characters carved in relief. And, uh, and you just said captures the whole story. none of your grandchildren can run around with the baby Jesus. So. Yes, because truth be told, <laughs> my four boys used to play with our nativity set, and they would play fetch Jesus and throw the little baby Jesus across the room, and then who could catch him first? So, you know, this relief where none of the pieces come apart, that has some appeal. These I are guess, really beautiful. This is oh. um, material, like the characters are dressed in actual material, but it's been stiffened, and so it's like a sculpture, a beautiful gold and silver sculpture of Mary, Joseph, and the baby. A much more baby. ornate and yes. elaborate representation Lovely. stylized of course often with the members of the so-called holy family with mm -hmm. halos to demonstrate that they were instruments in God's hand at this pivot of history We're at Bronner's Christmas Wonderland in Frankenmuth, Michigan. We are. In department number six, it's the nativity section. That's right, with shoppers all around. People are crowding around in these days before yes, Christmas. They are. Bronner's is the world's largest Christmas store. And no surprise that the nativity section is at the heart of the whole thing. It really is. Because the nativity represents the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. And a nativity actually is like an historic tableau. It, it is a snapshot. It, it's an Instagram, a Twitter hmm. of the most important moment in history. That's the birth of Jesus, the very person of God in human form. And that story is told to us in the New Testament. The history is recorded. And Luke's record of the birth of Jesus is one of the most famous. Let's just walk through that today, shall we? This is Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. What's interesting to note here is that Luke is very careful to tie the event to some secular, extra-biblical history. So we know exactly when this occurred, right in the period when Augustus Caesar ruled from Rome. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria, another marker in history so that we can place the birth of Jesus in the whole timeline of human development. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. And when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, well, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. In this store, people are looking for Christmas ornaments. They're looking for ways to celebrate and enhance the Christmas celebration in their home or their office, their school. But right here in the middle, we're at the nativity because for all the hustle and bustle around us, 
we're at the core of the Christmas story. Jesus is born, and he's born in real time in a real place. He's born in Bethlehem, still much in the news these days because yes. it's in what's sometimes called the occupied West Bank. It is much in contention between Palestinian and Israeli uh, secular officials. It is often a place of stress, and yet it is famously the place where Jesus was born. And you know, J.J., even before Jesus was born, the Lord told people where his son, his Messiah, was going to enter into human history. And he said it would be in Bethlehem. And that prophecy is recorded specifically in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Now, this is centuries before the yes. birth of Christ. Amazing. And yet, think about how the story fulfills it exactly. This is what the prophet Micah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said. But you, Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel will come from you, one whose origins are from the distant past. I mean, Get we're ready, talking Bethlehem. about Jesus. <laughs> yes. The one who was God, who was before the creation, and nothing was made that was not made by him. And this one who made the world came into the world through the doorway at Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Now, the story we just read from Luke chapter 2 has many other interesting details. There was a fiancé, Mary, who was with child, and she went with Joseph to Bethlehem to fulfill a secular command of the local right. government. They we know to be that counted. she was. We all have to go to our hometowns. And, and we know that she was carrying a child that was conceived by the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's a lot of supernatural in the story, but just for a minute, as we're looking at these nativities, think about Bethlehem, yeah. why that matters. What is it about that place? It's the city of David. Yes. David came from Bethlehem, the famous king, and the Messiah was also prophesied to be the son of David. So he needs to be born there. That's his hometown. What else is famous about Bethlehem? Well, you know, Rachel, Jacob's wife, is buried near Bethlehem. This is the place where Ruth, which would be David's great-great-grandmother, Ruth met Boaz in Bethlehem. This is connected to the line of God. This is God's plan and his purpose. And Micah's prophecy comes true when Joseph and Mary make the trek from northern part of Israel down to Bethlehem even though they lived in Nazareth, That's and both right. of them were Nazarenes. What's so striking to me is how God has a plan, and over all the centuries and all the generations, everyone is exactly where they need to be at the right time. Hmm. And when Caesar Augustus decides that he wants to tax the whole world, when his Quirinius, the governor of Syria, someone who's appointed from Rome, decides, you know, we're going to do it here, and this will be the first census when that guy's in power, and you're going to have to go back to your hometown, how all of those pieces, that machinery of the secular world is actually being moved by the hand of God yes. for his larger and greater purposes. Mm -hmm. When you look at nativity this Christmas, you need to understand God doesn't miss any detail. And he has plans and purposes that are always for the good. And even bad guys will think they're running the world, but their decisions can be harnessed by the hand of heaven to fulfill God's purposes for redemption and life. When you look at a nativity, think about Bethlehem. And think about how even today it's much in the news. But who knows what plan of God is being unfolded. We need to be secure at Christmas time knowing that God is the master of history. When we think about Bethlehem, what, what comes to mind at Christmas? What traditions do we have besides the nativity that bring Bethlehem to mind? Can you think of a song, for instance? Well, there's the beautiful song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, How Still We See Thee Lie. And that is such a magnificent piece of poetry and music a pastor named Phillips Brooks, after the Civil War in the United States, exhausted, exhausted by all the drama of the Civil War, the losses in his congregation. He was pastor in Philadelphia at the time. Everyone knew someone who had been killed or maimed or injured. He was worn out. And so the church sent him on a sabbatical, and they sent him to the Holy Land. And on that Christmas Eve, way back then, he actually went to Bethlehem, and he was so moved at the little town, still perched on a hillside, still today the same, same piece of dirt. He was so moved, seen it under a starlit sky as he stood in what was then a shepherd's field. He wrote those lines, inspired in the moment. And the nativity scene, a hymn like a little town of Bethlehem, all help us be reminded that God is precise. He knows exactly what he's doing and how to get it done. And it's his intention to send his life into this world. And he did so in the person of his son, Christ. And all of us can, in a way, get to Bethlehem this Christmas. You may not be able to physically go there, but get a nativity. 
yes. and recreate that in your own house. Even if you can't get a Christmas tree, if your apartment is so tiny you can't get the tree, let the tree go, get a nativity. Yes. Maybe in your office, you can put something on your desk. Wherever you are this Christmas, at every glance, remember Bethlehem and remember what happened there. And then that should remind you about the plan of God and how God will go to any length to reach and meet you right where you are. And circumstances that you may not have chosen, I'm sure Joseph and Mary did not want to go to Bethlehem. They don't want to take a trip. Not pregnant. Not pregnant on the back of a mule. <laughs> oh. Sounds not very pleasant. And no. yet, as you step back from the story and look at it, oh my goodness, it was the Lord's doing. Absolutely. And that's true for us this Christmas too. There may be things this Christmas that aren't easy for you and maybe not what you chose. But God, if your life is surrendered into his hand, is working those together for good, just like he did at that first Christmas time. How do you get there? How do you find that piece of Christmas in your life this year? Well, you could start by praying. And we're going to pray right now and invite you to join us. Lord, we are so thankful. We're so thankful that you are the master of history, that there's no detail that escapes your notice, and that you can harness even what people who do not serve you do to work things for good for those who love you. We thank you for the Christmas story and how all of your plans, your destiny, your purposes were fulfilled in it. And may that remind us the same can be true for us today. And first, Lord, we just ask that you will take our lives. We lay them before you and know we're not worthy to be yours and we're not worthy of your favor, but because of what your son Jesus did. By faith, we accept that he has paid the price to make us clean before you. And we give ourselves to you. And now, Lord, open our eyes to see all the machinery of the present day working for our good, even the hard things, the difficult things. May we have a nativity in view. May we see the characters fixed around the manger where Jesus comes to earth. And may that remind us that Jesus is still here with us and that you are still moving events for our good and according to your good will. This Christmas, Lord, may all of us find ourselves in a way at Bethlehem for Jesus' sake. Amen. if you'd like to know more about this Christ who is the center of Christmas, this Christ who's in the middle of every nativity, this Christ who came into the world at Bethlehem, give us a call. Dial this number 1-800-757-VIEW. That's 1-800-757-8439. 24 hours a day and seven days a week. We're right by the phone and we are so ready to hear from you. Give us a call. You can also find us on the internet at www.cbhviewpoint.org. You can read there about the Viewpoint Ministry. You can send us an email and we will reply. That's CBH, Christians Broadcasting Hope, viewpoint.org. Or at the last, send me a letter. Address it to Jim Lyon, Viewpoint, Post Office Box 2420, Anderson, Indiana, 46018, USA. 
But whether you call us up, go online, or use the postal service, let us hear from you. JJ, so exciting to be with you here in Department 6, the Nativity section. It's such a big at deal. At Bronner's <laughs> Christmas Wonderland. Christmas is a really big deal, and it all begins at the Nativity. We want to thank you for joining us, too. We hope you'll be with us again next week as we continue our series, Christmas is a Big Deal. Join us then. This is Jim Lyon. Stay tuned, and Merry Christmas. Thank you.